Thank you for joining our online worship for this weekend. I'm joined again by Brooke Flegner, and we're going to take off our masks since we are appropriately distanced from each other, and you might be able to hear us a little bit better. Uh, Brooke, uh, tell us again where you're going to go to school in the fall. Nature Hill. Grade? Eighth grade. And tell us again what you did during the summertime. Uh, I played games outside like ladder ball, and I was swimming a lot. Good. Yeah. Are you looking forward to going back to school? Yeah. Have you missed it? Good for you, that's great. Well, I hope you have a wonderful return. And we're gonna be in confirmation together as you're an eighth grader. I'm looking forward to meeting with your group as well as with the seventh graders. I should tell you, Brooke, and everybody else, that we're going to have these online services for weeks and weeks at a time. However, we're going to have indoor church starting in a month. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll have the five o'clock on Saturday and this regular times on Sunday as well. So we're looking forward to that, and we'll be giving a lot more information. Well, let's go up and lead the service, okay? Okay. All right. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. For our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I'm going to ask Brooke to do the reading, which is known by as the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. I didn't know that, did you? Yeah. Well, I think you'll love the words. If you'd offer that for us, that'd be great. Thank you. Lord, make us instruments of your peace, where there is hatred let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we pardon, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Brooke is going to read the lesson from Romans 12. This lesson is so appropriate for this week when there has been so much in the news about strife and conflict coming out of Kenosha. It's like the church, whenever they set up this lesson years ago, was thinking of us. Listen carefully to the words Brooke reads from Romans 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. 
love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brooke. Last week in the Gospel lesson, Peter made his confession, saying that Jesus was the Messiah. And at the end of that Gospel lesson, Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anybody about what they had just heard Peter say. And now we know why, because he tells them to take up their cross and not to immediately think he's going to be a triumphant hero. Here we hear Matthew 16. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I often drive by a cemetery in Racine, and there are some graves right by the road where I'm driving, and I think to myself, I bet I'm the only person in the last 25 years who's offered a prayer at the grave of Martha and Ernie. They were members of my last church, and shortly after I arrived, they asked me if I would be their power of attorney. They were Swedish immigrants, had no children, no family in this country, and only a couple of elderly friends who could not be their power of attorney. So I said, oh yes, I can do that, not knowing at all what it would entail. I love Martha and love taking care of her, but sometimes she would exasperate me to no end. She'd ask me to get her supplies and bring them to the nursing home. Once I brought a tube of denture cream for her dentures, and she said, you paid two twenty-five for this tube, and you can get it for $1.87 at the right aid on 6th Street. Oh, brother. Well, she was living by an unwritten rule deep within her heart, which is this. A penny saved is a penny earned. We all have these unwritten rules deep within our hearts. For we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal. It's just part of who we are. When I grew up in our home, my mom and dad never had to mention going to church on Sunday. It was just assumed. It was an unwritten rule. Our family goes to church. Once I visited a friend, Dave, in Illinois, and he sassed his mother. I thought, what? You can talk back to your mother? We had that rule. This never would happen in our house. Well, there are similar unwritten rules that are part of the Christian tradition. The tradition of Jesus says this, those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for the sake of the gospel will find it. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. We all know these things deep within our hearts. We see that in the life, death, resurrection, and ministry of Jesus. Jesus said those words five different times in different ways in the gospels. It's part of who we are. Well, Along with these unwritten rules, we have some other ones as well. The columnist David Brooks, the brilliant conservative columnist from the New York Times, reported that Plato said there are three main urges within humankind. Plato said, one, we have the desire for reason. Number two, we have the urge for desires. Reason and desires. And thirdly, Plato said, we have the human desire for recognition. Reason, desire, recognition. They are also part of the air that we breathe. The hunger for recognition 
leads a church member to say, nobody cares about me at church anymore. I never hear from anybody. And so the person stops coming. The hunger for recognition leads a person who posts on Facebook to go back to their posts and see how many likes they have. We're like Sally Fields upon getting an Oscar oh, several years ago who said, you like me, you really, really like me. We like that human recognition through Facebook. Once I had a church secretary who quit because the raise the council gave her was five cents less than what she was expecting. She was a wonderful secretary a valuable member of the team, but the council drew the line. They would not give her $7.50 an hour. They drew the line at $7.45 an hour. So, adios. She felt she wasn't being recognized sufficiently. Deep within us is this desire for recognition, and it leads black people across America to say, we feel like society does not recognize us as members of society or even as fully human beings. This struggle has been going on a long time. 50 years ago, the chant and plea was, I am somebody from black people across America. And it's the same basis for Black Lives Matter. Now, keep that in mind as you remember that St. Paul talked about this desire for recognition. He understood Plato's world. St. Paul knew Plato's world very well, and so he wrote about reason, desire, and recognition. He knew what he was doing when he said, instead of putting yourself forward, seeking your own recognition, outdo one another in showing honor to others. Contribute to the needs of saints. Extend hospitality. Do not repay evil for evil. Combine recognition for others with denying yourself. It's a big challenge. We have these competing stories within us. That's why we need to turn again and again to, to the lives of faithful Christians, leaders who have reminded us of Jesus' rules for living that should be deep within us. This week, as much as any week in the last 50 years, I have been mourning the death of Dr. Martin Luther King and his message of nonviolence. And upon reflection on his message this week, I wish I had had the courage to go to Kenosha, gathering together with sisters and brothers of the faith, taking up the cross, lifting high our crosses, and reading the words of St. Paul to the rioting people. Yes, you should be angry, but hear this word from Scripture. We weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not repay evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble. Live peaceably with one another. I didn't go to Kenosha and say those words, holding high the cross. I didn't have the courage. Of course, it's unrealistic. But the fact that things are unrealistic never stop the saints of the church. So instead of acting saintly, I, and probably you, watched another round of urban violence as people across America said to themselves, well, that's the way they are. Again, denying recognition to others. It's truly hashtag sad. But I also had an uplifting moment this week. A friend named Brian stopped by, and we were having a discussion about the week's events. Brian said, I feel so sad for that young man. I said something along the lines of, yes, isn't it sad? In front of his children and paralyzed. He said, oh, of course, I feel sad for Jacob Blake, but I'm talking about the cop who shot him. Think about how his life is shattered. He's a young cop. He made a terrible mistake. He went to work that morning thinking he'd keep the peace, and he just overreacted. Now he cannot be himself. He'll lose his profession. He's tormented. He'll have to move. He'll be prosecuted. I feel terrible for him. Somewhere along the line, hopefully in one of the services that Brian and I went to together, Brian heard these words at worship. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. 
but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. In his anger over the events in Kenosha where Brian's family was raised, he was able to turn the tables on his anger and see honor, hope, and blessing. That's always the challenge. To balance the vision of Jesus, cross, self-denial, losing life, with the desire for recognition, giving recognition to others, and quelling the prideful desire for self-recognition in ourselves. It's the challenge for Christians. How do we make it easier? I think by keeping Jesus' message at the forefront. I think we keep the model of the cross at the forefront. The model we have seen in the saints, the people around us and the saints who have gone before us. Jacob Blake's mother, who pleaded for people to follow the path of nonviolence and stop the rioting in Kenosha. The families of Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, forgiving the white supremacist teenager Dylan Roof for mass murdering at a Bible study. The model of all those who have taken up the cross for the greater good. I've never forgotten the true story that came out of World War II, where a Scotsman named Ernest Gordon was part of a group of prisoners who worked in Burma on the River Kwai. At the end of one of their terrible work days, they counted the shovels, and one of the shovels was missing from the work party. The Japanese guard was enraged. I'm going to quote what Ernest Gordon said he said. He worked himself up into a paranoid fury, ordering whoever was guilty to step forward. No one moved. All die, he shouted, all die. And he shrieked, cocking his rifle and aiming it at the prisoners. At that moment, one man stepped forward to take the blame. A man who everyone knew to be a Methodist Christian. The guard clubbed him to death as he stood at attention and dropped. And then when they returned to their final destination at camp, the tools were counted and no shovel was missing. Word of this spread like wildfire through this dysfunctional prison camp. An innocent, innocent man had been willing to die to save the lives of others. This one man's selfless sacrifice revolutionized the camp's atmosphere. Many sought out answers about how to prepare for death and how to get closer to God. Ernest Gordon, who later was to become the chaplain at Princeton University, became the unofficial camp chaplain a small church was erected. Prayer was held nightly. Faith, Gordon said, thrives when there is no hope but God. And God did not disappoint. The men began to treat each other like brothers with care and kindness. When, when we stop seeking our own recognition, when there is no possibility of fulfillment, we are taught the value of giving recognition to others of seeking life, real life, by taking up our crosses, truly finding who we are as Christians. Faith thrives when there is no hope but God. And with that faith, unwritten but filling our lungs, we bless others and live peaceably with all. Amen. Brooke, could you please offer the prayers for the day? Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of all peoples, you call us to live peaceably with everyone. Help people of all races to see the brotherhood and sisterhood of humankind, and especially change our minds when we judge others based on outward appearances. Still, the hands that would express anger through violence. Grant peace to Kenosha and strengthen Jacob Blake and his family with your healing power. And help us to do our part to overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of faithfulness, fill our hearts with gratitude for the opportunity to hear your word 
to receive your presence in the bread and wine. Surround Charlotte and Ruby with your blessing, that they might find joy in being part of the family of faith sharing in your holy meal. Bless us as a community of fellowship and support. In the midst of the COVID virus, help to persevere that our congregation might reach the promised land of recovery as a strengthened body, willing to sacrifice for the sake of Christ. Grant us a vision of the joy of life lived through him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promised to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing. And heal the sick. Frank, Julie, Char, Larry, Cindy, Mitch, Richard, Janet, Krista, Kim, and others we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brooke, you can stay right here. We are going to celebrate communion now. If you do not have bread and wine right in front of you now, you could pause this video and get some bread and wine or any other kind of alcoholic beverage to use as we celebrate communion. If you ever need to have one of those small packets of wine and bread contained in a sanitized manner, we will be happy, I will be happy to bring that to your house or you can come by church and pick it up. For now, Brooke, you can turn and face me as I come up here. You can stand right there. And we will celebrate with the words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner also, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may now consume the body of Christ broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Brooke, let's go back to our places. And could you please offer the closing prayer? Oh God, through prayers, praise, bread and wine, and word, we have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. May the love of God enfold you. May the grace of God uphold you. May the power of God set you free to love and serve God's people. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.